I really enjoy shopping for gifts for people. And I don't like to get a gift that's just easy to find or reasonable in price or a common item on every gift list like a pen or a body fragrance or a popular CD or a book that's on the bestseller list with a 20% markdown or a gift card to a good store. I really prefer to take time looking for something that I believe the person whom I love needs or could definitely use. So I'm not simply looking for something. I'm looking for something with the person in mind whom I know and love. For instance, years ago, I went shopping for a Christmas gift for my mother at the mall, and I went into Bloomingdale's. At first, I looked at and carefully smelt the various new fragrances. And while they all smelled lovely, something I knew, somehow I knew that none of them really was a fragrance my mother would wear. They all seemed too strong for a woman like my mother, whom I experienced as a little more subtle in her taste. I then looked at jewelry and then went upstairs and looked at kitchenware and figurines and ladies' purses. And after about two hours, I was weary from looking and decided to try again the next day. I was pretty confident that I would eventually find what I was looking for. It would not be something I would know simply by seeing it. It would certainly involve my heart because I knew that when I saw what I had been searching for, my heart would tell me I'd finally found it. So the next day I was walking through Macy's in New York City and I came to the area where they sell picture frames and suddenly I remembered that during the year I had taken a lovely picture of my mother and father that fall. They were walking away from me and they had their arms behind each other's back. It was such a tender picture of intimacy and it beautifully captured their 64 years of marriage. And when I saw the frame, I knew in my heart, this is what I needed and this was what I wanted. And I was so glad. I was relieved and I rejoiced. I found the gift I had been looking for. One morning several weeks ago, I awakened earlier than usual. My mind, it was restless with thoughts and I couldn't get back to sleep. This happens sometimes. So over the years, I've learned to get out of bed rather than toss and turn and to sit in front of the icon of Our Lady of Perpetual Help, which is across from me, and I pray. Now, why do I do that? Because I believe that Mary will find the gift I need at the moment I'm praying. And what is that gift? Well, it's the gift she knows I need most at the particular moment that I'm praying. The grace that I'm looking for and yet sometimes don't really know what exactly it is I need. In the book of Proverbs, there is a beautiful verse which I love to apply to Mary. They that in the early morning watch for me shall find me. Another translation of the words, shall find me, reads, shall find grace, which implies, of course, that to find Mary is to find grace. St. Bernard of Clairvaux takes this image a step further, and he urges us, seek grace, and seek it through Mary, the finder of grace. I really like this title, don't you? Mary, the finder of grace. It conjures up for me the biblical image of the women in the parable who is looking for the lost coin, or the merchant who is searching for the pearl of great price, or someone like myself who is carefully searching for the right gift. Mary is the finder of grace, searching carefully for the particular grace she knows we need looking for the grace which her heart tells her will truly help us, either to find our way, free us from the temptation we face, assure us that we are not alone, 
or encourage us not to be afraid. Now on that particular restless morning, there were many graces that I wanted. I wanted a clear answer to my problem, which had caused me to stay awake. I was expecting courage to face this conflict. I wanted a little wisdom to enlighten my confusion. And most of all, I was hoping that maybe, just maybe, Mary might move my body to get some more sleep. I don't like losing my sleep time. But to my surprise, Mary gave me the grace I needed then. And that was simply comfort, comfort and peace. Those were the graces she knew I needed at that particular moment. Because in the comfort of Mary's embrace, my fears faded away. And my energy, which was drained by anxiety and by my mind's early morning madness, well, that energy seemed to be restored. As a matter of fact, even doubled, so much so that I suddenly had no desire to sleep, but to get out of bed and begin my day. So the peace of Christ, the grace of God, calmed the tempest of my mind and gave me the assurance, that blessed assurance that all would be well. Mary, who is full of grace, she also searches for the grace we sinners have lost. The grace we really won't be able to find unless we ask her for help. St. Alphonsus exhorts all of us who have lost grace to go to Mary and they will find grace with her. He tells us to confidently urge her, Mary, give me back what I have lost and what you have found. Because Mary always finds what she seeks and will not fail us. St. Bernard of Clairvaux calls her the ladder of sinners. In other words, sinners who have fallen into the mire of their own sin actually believe that she will find a way to rescue them and pull them out of the mire and put them back on the pathway to God. St. Augustine calls her the only hope of sinners. They hope that through Mary she will find the forgiveness they yearn for. St. John Chrysostom, in one of his prayers, voices this hope that St. Augustine says sinners experience with Mary. Hail Mary, mother of God and mother of us all, pray always to Jesus for us. Find for us the mercy we need. Help us find the wonderful things he has prepared for those who love him. Perhaps this is why we pray that simple but beautiful prayer. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now. What we're really saying is, help us sinners now at this very moment. Give us the grace we need at this moment. You are our mother. You know what's best. We sinners hope in you. Oh, Mary, mother of perpetual help, you are able to help us. You are the finder of grace. We place ourselves in your hands. We hide under your mantle of mercy. Tell us what you want us to do, and then give us the grace to do it.